Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy back again with the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer. This is the updated version of the A1 that comes with the new heat bed cable. And if you want to pick up a Bamboo Lab A1, you can do so directly from the Bamboo Lab website. They're available, they're ready to ship out right now. In this video, I want to talk about my experience with multicolor printing using the AMS light. Now, AMS stands for Automatic Material System, and it's one of the bigger things that makes the Bamboo Lab printer stand out above all of the other consumer-based 3D printers on the market today. So the AMS can really come in handy in a couple of key ways. The first one is allowing you to automatically switch between different color filaments without needing to manually do anything. And then the second part of that is you can do multi-color printing, again, hands-free without having to manually swap any filaments at all. Now I got the AMS light mounted on top of the printer using a design that Bamboo Lab came up with that I was able to print out and using the hardware that came with the combo was able to secure everything together. It does also come with a stand by default that sits right next to the printer on the right side. You can use that. I've also seen people mount theirs on the wall because this seems a little precarious to some people and I totally understand so they don't want to put all that weight on top. But it's been pretty solid for me and I haven't had any problems with it so far. Putting together the AMS light was really simple. I mean just like the printer most of it is already done for you. The only thing that you need to do is just connect a few things here and there and you're ready to go. It's not difficult at all. And then you can mount on different spools to this AMS unit. Now I've got this split between Bamboo Lab filament, that's the one that comes on these gray spools with all the holes in it, these are the RFID filaments, and then filaments from third parties. In this case, I got eSun filament on the front, and on the back you can't really see it, but this is JO filament. And you can use different brands of filament with the Bamboo Lab AMS light if you want. It, but if you're gonna do that, just kind of be aware that this is designed for Bamboo Lab spools because they fit on nice and snug and easily. They come off easily. But if you're using some other types of spools, they may not fit and you might need to adapt for it. Let's take the JL spools for example. The hole on the center of the spool is bigger than what the AMS light can account for. So if you just try to put that on here, at the slightest touch, the whole spool is just gonna go falling right off the printer. So you might need to go on to Maker World or wherever you get your prints and print out an adapter. And that's going to go into the spool and is gonna go onto the AMS light so that everything fits nice and secure. I printed out a few of these and they have been working wonderfully. The other thing that you should be aware of is that the RFID technology technology inside of these spools allows the printer to tell the slicer exactly what filaments are loaded and it automatically sets printing parameters for that specific type of filament. You don't get that benefit when you use third party filaments. So in that case, you're going to have to maybe do a little bit of dialing in if you don't get the results that you want. Fortunately for me, I've just been using the default high-speed PLA profile that Bamboo Lab provides inside of the Bamboo Studio Slicer, and things have been going pretty well for me so far. I wanna show you how I'm able to tell the slicer which filaments to use when I do a multicolor print if I'm not using the Bamboo Lab spools in all four spots and I'm trying to do four colors because you can sync what's on the AMS light to the Bamboo Studio slicer. But when you do that, when you're using spools that aren't compatible, they are not going to show up. Now, there is a way for you to tell the printer on the printer exactly what filaments are there and what color they are, but I don't want to do that. What I end up doing is just remembering where the non-supported spools are on the AMS, and then when I slice the file, before it begins printing, it has you confirm what color filaments are in each slot. It tells you what colors should be there, and then underneath are the colors that you have loaded up there already. If you're not using a, a supported spool, then that color is just going to be transparent and is going to be blank. But that's okay, because so long as you know that in this example, the black filament is in spot three, and then the red filament is in spot two, all I have to do underneath that red icon, right before I begin printing, I'll just say, use slot two. Right under the black one, use slot three. 
and then everything will be just fine. So I like to just remember it. So if you wanna do it the way that I do it, you can even take a picture of your current setup so you can take it back to the slicer so you don't get confused. And then everything prints out the way and the color that it's supposed to print out as. Now, with that being said, let me show you some multicolor prints that I've done. Now, I like to print things for examples that are things that I actually want. And I've come across these awesome pixel art keychains that you can easily enlarge to become wall art. Now, these are based on Nintendo franchises, and I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find these on Maker World, and the creator has multiple different packs. You can do various Nintendo characters. He has some separated for Pokemon. He has some separated for Super Mario Brothers 3, and this right here is Samus from Metroid, and I printed out two of these because I messed up one of them. Now, this is the way that she's supposed to look and this is the way the first time that I did it when I did not tell the slicer the proper positioning where the filament is so it ended up only printing in three colors just this um, green black and orange but then when I went back and made sure that I told the slicer properly which filaments were in what spot this ended up printing out the quality on these are just amazing. The first time that I did this, I was just blown away. The first layer of these prints is just absolutely beautiful. This right here constitutes as the first layer because when these prints are done, the black is the last thing that goes on it. So this is the first layer and it is just perfectly smooth, perfectly flawless. The settings that the creator set up for these are just mwah. They are just wonderful. It prints a little bit slow, but if you expand those keychains, they start off very small, but you can enlarge it. You can make sure that you change only the X and the Y axis and not the Z so that you can maintain the same thickness. And then it comes out looking absolutely beautiful. So those are two examples of that. And I just been printing wall art like crazy. Here's another one of the duck from Duck Hunt, same thing, you know? In the slicer, I had to get rid of the holes where the keychain holes would have been, enlarged it, told it to print, and it just looks absolutely beautiful. This came out perfect as well. Another one that I printed, which was actually the first thing that I printed, is this Koopa, like this flying Koopa turtle from Mario, and this one came out 98% perfect. The only thing that's messed up is there was a little bit of funkiness going on with the white filament in this spot right here. It looks like it was like maybe a little bit torn or something. That was the only flaw. One of the only flaws in printing that I have seen yet on this printer and that says a lot but overall this still came out beautiful. And then next to last is this mushroom from Super Mario Brothers 3. Again, nearly perfect. Only exception is a tiny bit of black ended up going onto the white. Maybe there was a little bit of filament still hanging on to the nozzle when it got finished purging and it just dotted it right there. But other than that, beautiful, came out great. Clean colors all the way around. And then I printed out this coaster. From Hell Divers 2, this is awesome. Have a cup of Liberty. If you play this game, you know exactly what that's about. And again, came out perfect. Perfect first layer, perfectly smooth, beautiful, beautiful text, no bleeding. It's just great. This AMS system is great. Now, when I got finished printing these things out and I'm looking at them, I'm like, this is just incredible. It's amazing what I'm able to do in three or four colors on this machine, totally automated. I can see why people love this so much. But one of the biggest criticisms about the AMS light system or the larger AMS system for the P series and the X series of bamboo lab printers is the amount of waste that they can produce. Maybe you heard about printer poop. Well, there is certainly lots of poop to be had. So if you're kind of new and you don't know what the printer poop is, this is basically how it goes. Whenever it needs to change a color, it automatically takes the print head and it moves it all the way to this spot right here. There's a lever that it pushes in and it cuts the filament. When it cuts that filament, when it needs to change colors, it will purge it 
in a little compartment over here and it will flick it off into this bin. Then it will load in the next color and using what other, whatever algorithm Bamboo Lab programmed into this is going to purge more filament until it can get a nice clean color change so that you don't get colors that bleed. Everything can look nice and smooth. And when it's done purging, it flicks that off into the bin as well. And depending on what you want to print, it can produce a ton of poop, maybe. For these enlarged keychains, the amount of the amount of waste was very, very minimal because this only required maybe about, I don't know, less than 10 filament changes. So with these enlarged keychains, the amount of waste is going to be the same, whether you make it small or make it large. So for example, let's say if this required 10 filament changes, it's going to be 10 if it's small and it's going to be 10 if it's large. So the amount of waste is going to stay the same. And it doesn't take a ton of filament to print these either. That's why I love these so much. And they're not very thick, but they're not super thin either. So they're strong, but at the same time, they're big. So this doesn't produce much weight. Ironically, something like this can produce, will produce a ton, a ton of waste. This is one of the Jordan 1's shoe, the very first pair of Jordans that came out. And first of all, this just came out beautifully. I mean, just, it's a shoe, it's a freaking shoe. And when you look at this, just, just right here at arm's length, you're like, how do you print this beautiful looking shoe on a 3D print? Like what? That's crazy. And it's designed to be like big, like a regular shoe, but I shrunk this down and it just came out wonderfully. But in the process, it produced so much waste. How much waste did it produce? Well, let me show you in the slicer. So here I have Bamboo Studio open, and this is to give you a look at the amount of waste that can be produced with multicolor prints. So here are the Jordan ones right here, and then right next to it is the little Goku figure in which uh, some of the filament was purged into this object to create it instead of just wasting it, but there was still a lot of waste to be had. All right, so let's look over here. From here, we can see the different color filaments that I used and how much of it was used for different things. So right up here at the top, we see that for the red color, it's going to take 11.94 grams of filament. The supports are going to be 2.5 grams, 2.05 grams, and the amount of flushed filament, 34.92 grams. So that's the filament that's just gone. And then for the tower, which is right over here, the red portion of that equaled to 9.76 grams, all right? And here are the other colors. When we combine all of these together, you'll see that the model itself is 39.26 grams, which is not a lot of filament. And we see that we have just over four grams of support material. But look at the flushed material, 145.51 grams. That is nearly four times the weight of the actual model itself. And then when you factor in the prime tower, which this tower is getting close to the amount of filament that it took to make this model. And we see that in total, this entire getup cost me 216.96 grams of filament, even though the object itself is only 39.26 grams. And the bulk of the filament that I used was used towards flushing. So that is the big trade-off that you might have to run into if you want to do multicolor printing using this kind of a system. It can be very, very wasteful for something that really takes less than 40 grams of filament to print in one color, but when you want to do it in multiple colors and it's constantly switching colors and it's constantly purging filament, can easily end up with close to four times as much waste 
than it took to make the shoe in general. So you're really gonna need to want to have this printed and really want to display this in order to make it worth it overall. So some things are worth printing in multiple colors, but other things, depending on how conservative you wanna be with your filament, may not be worth it at all because it just takes so much and then you're left with a bunch of waste. But the good thing is there's some very creative people out there who've come up with some ingenious ways to use this filament poop, use this waste, instead of just you throwing it in the garbage. For example, I've seen on Maker World there are clocks that you can print out that use this filament waste as a decoration inside of the clock. I've seen someone have something where you can melt this down and make spinny tops out of it. You know, it's just a lot of different things that you can do with filament waste instead of just throwing it out. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be waste and most people aren't going to be able to recycle something like this so that you can print with it again. So that's just something that you definitely need to be aware of. It's great to be able to print in multiple colors, but just know that there are limitations when it comes to how much filament you are going to use versus the item that you're trying to produce and whether or not that's even going to be worth it in the end. There are ways to sort of mitigate the amount of waste that is produced. For example, you can have another object on the print bed and then tell the slicer to purge into that object. For example, I have this little mini Goku figure here. I should have made him bigger, but I didn't. So some of the waste ended up being purged into him to make up this model, which is why he's got all these funky colors on him. But, um, you know, it's not the perfect solution, but it is something that you can do. And if you got your eye on this, this is a purge tower and the printer does make this in order to um, regulate the pressure inside of the nozzle. And that's going to help you get better prints in the end. So it helps to purge some of this in here and then it does some more and makes this really large tower and makes Maybe you could come up with a creative way to use things like this in the end, but if you aren't going to be using stuff like this, it's just considered waste. So I wanted to make sure that I told you both the good and the bad when it comes to doing multicolored prints. It's amazing that we can do this and Bamboo Lab has done a fantastic job of implementing it to make it as easy as possible for us to be able to do it and the results are just fantastic. I mean, these things look like something that you would just buy in a store. They look that good. But at the same time, you need to be aware that depending on what you want to print, you can get a lot of waste out of it. So you need to have something that's going to make it worth your while. So hopefully as time goes on, we'll have some more methods that use this similar system, but can reduce the amount of waste that is needed to do something like this. And I already know that Prusa does it, but they use five tool heads to do it. And that's what makes the waste so much less. But at the same time, that printer is like, what, four or five thousand dollars. So it's not really in the same field, but um, hopefully we can use some more affordable methods in order to achieve that same goal. And as fast as things are moving, hopefully it won't take too long to get there. So that's it for now, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'm gonna be back with another video about the A1. And I have a smaller 0.2 millimeter nozzle that I'm gonna be using to print out some miniatures and compare them to the ones that I printed with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So I'm gonna be doing that very soon. So be sure to be on the lookout for that and subscribe if you want to know exactly when that video comes out, all right? So any questions that you guys might have about the AMS or whatever, leave it down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you or even make another video about it if I think I can. So thank you all again so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.